What's up everyone, welcome to episode 18 of Only For The Strong. Today's guest is former All Black, now professional boxer, Liam Messam. How are you, brother? Hey, bro. Good, thanks. I'll, I'll probably call myself more of a part-time boxer than a right. professional boxer. <laughs> For sure. Um, so where I really wanted to start with you is uh, your upbringing. Um, what exactly did that look like and how do you think it shaped your career uh, as an athlete and an adult later in life? Uh, yeah, so I grew up in, uh, in Rotorua. Um, got a, a pretty big family, a pretty unique family. Uh, got eight of us, but uh, five of us are adopted, uh, so we're a bit of a bit of a fruit salad. But uh, I've got a younger brother who's two years younger than me. Um, so me and him, we were just outside uh, every day, pretty much, just playing any sport we could: uh, cricket, football, rugby, um, golf. Yeah, we were just yeah, two two little kids just getting stuck into sports and. It was that good old rule? We had to be um, come home when it was, uh, you know, street lights came on. So we we're out there until till dark and, and playing every sort of sport. And I think that really shaped my my passion and, and hunger for sport. And um, yeah, you know, doing it at a real young age, and obviously to where I am now, um, played a, a huge part. And also seeing seeing dad, um, you know, working hard. You know, you'd hardly see him during the day. He was always off to work. So having that sort of work ethic, um, seeing that work ethic as a real young age. I'm really, you know, still me into where I am today. Mm, for sure. Was it pretty evident to you early on that sports or just athletics was, was where you wanted to go? Nah, it wasn't. Nah, I was just a, like a, any typical Kiwi kid, bro. I was just playing sports just because, you know, I love to play sports and probably because mum and dad kicked us out of the house because mm. they didn't want two noisy boys uh, running amok. Um, you know, we didn't have any, uh, well, back then it was a Sega, I think. So mm. we didn't have any Sega or Playstations. We were always outside always told to get outside and, and play sports so uh, it wasn't until I was probably the age of 15 16 where I realized you know um, I'm pretty good at this mm. um, and c- could turn it into a career because yeah I was just just playing sport because I loved it with my mm. mates and you know something you could do on the weekend mm. so you went to Rotorua Boys is that correct yeah yeah went to Rotorua Boys yeah what was high school like oh it was awesome it was awesome it's, mm. uh, as most people would say I had a really great time at, at, um, at high school um, that's where the sort of the, that passion for, to, for rugby for the high level came from. Um, mm. I had really good role models and um, teachers to, to really guide me and look look after me through that that sort of transition and period during high school. Um, yeah, and I pretty much put my eggs into 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 one basket at high school, um, and yeah, fortunate enough, or I worked hard enough to to make sure that um, you know I could keep doing this for a very long time. Um, so yeah, I loved high school. You know, you can. Tuesday, Thursday afternoon trainings, turn up Saturday, have a pie and coke before the game and mm. um, get stuck in. Um, yeah, that can't happen these days, but you know, yeah, I, loved, I loved every minute of high school. Mm. So one thing I understand we have in common is seeing how detrimental like conventional pain relief and mental health medication uh, has on our family and, and friends around us. Um, can you tell me a little bit about Aura CBD, what exactly it is and uh, how it came to be? Yeah, Auto CBD is a, a wee business adventure. Uh, me and a few lads in France, Teddy Stanaway being one, um, started in over in France. Uh, it was just a, a great way just to, to um, yeah, get into that alternative uh, medication because uh, I've been you know doing this for twenty plus years and mm. taking a lot of Voltaren in my time and you know that's not the best thing for your body and we just I just wanted to try something new and different and had the opportunity to to try it up when I was playing in France um, and really felt the, the benefits of, of um, CBD. Mm. Um, and there was my, my friend Teddy said, oh, we should create our own business to, you know, hopefully bring it back here to New Zealand one day just because we both saw the benefits of, of CBD as personal users and just how effective it was for us um, as athletes and, um, you know, sort of get away from those other nasty chemicals that, that we put in our bodies to, to sort of look after ourselves because, you know, we put our bodies through some immense pain and some um, some horrific injuries that uh, just anything that's sort of natural and organic uh, can really help. Mm. What needs to happen for you to be able to distrib- distribute and, and sell CBD in New Zealand? Oh, there's a lot. <laughs> there's yeah. a lot. To, we haven't got hours and hours to, to speak about that, but there's mm. just, it just seems to be barriers every everywhere we go. We're trying to bring it back to New Zealand to, to you know benefit um, our family, our friends. Um, so we're chipping away. We, we keep working at it every day. Um, Teddy plays a big part over there in France to sort of s- rules and uh, whatnot change all the time here in New Zealand. Um, mm. In France, it's, it's a lot simpler in Europe. Um, it's been in their system for a long time now. Um, 
and I guess when there's more study and more research done behind it, yeah. um, and there's science behind it, then you know who knows. Um, it came close, was it last year or a couple of years ago? Mm. Um, CBD coming into um, the country, so yeah, we just keep chipping away, um, and hopefully one day we can uh, bring water back to, to New Zealand. Because mm. even now, obviously being a little bit more involved in boxing, compared to footy, do you still see painkillers and antidepressants like quite prevalent and causing issues? Probably more the painkillers, I assume. Um, yeah, well, it's it's one of those things that you know, being a professional athlete takes its toll on the body, and um, yeah, sometimes you just need to take a little turn, and you just you know, I just wish there was more um, healthy or more natural um, remedies for people out there to, to take and um, you know exercise is a great thing for mental health mm. alone you know you don't need to be taking all these these pills or drugs and whatnot but um, I know working out for myself um, every day that helps me with my mental health um, and that's what I sort of work on but yeah I just you know getting a better understanding um, especially uh, with our friend in common Thomas at the cave um, mm. getting a better understanding of different um, what would you call them supplements or ingredients mm. that are out there in, in this world um natural ingredients and how that can help has, has really opened my mind to um and change and shift in, into into that sort of space as well mm. have you had any particular injuries that you're you're still battling coming off your footy career and then going into boxing like is there anything in particular that's that's been a real down buzz i guess oh everything bro the body's just mm. yeah the body's wrecked i was fortunate enough to, to play 20 plus years uh, professional rugby so um yeah, that's week in, week out, putting the body through through hell. But it was worth it at the end of the day. Um, I enjoyed mm. it. Um, yeah, I just got to keep staying active and keep staying moving. Um, that's the biggest thing. You sort of understand your body um, when you get to my age and, and what you need and what you don't need. So I sort of I used to love road running, um, mm. but unfortunately, that's not the best thing for my body. So, um, you know, you just find ways to sort of help you uh, get through day-to-day living um, and for me just moving some sort of way um, really helps it's when I sort of stop and sit on the couch for a couple of days and mm. you know you've got to get the old CRC in and squeeze the old joints to get going again so um, I'm only 39 so I'm not looking forward to when I hit 49 mm. you mentioned before how obviously at high school before training you'd have like a pie and a coke pre-workout and, and then you'd roll into training and hammer it out and then probably go get a feed um that's not that wasn't so optimal after oh. that how has uh from the time you started playing footy maybe in high school till now how has things such as uh rehabilitation nutrition and strength con- training uh, strength conditioning training advanced in that time oh hugely hugely i come from the the school of gordon titchens um, I was 16 years old when I first got invited to New Zealand Sevens camp. So, if you, anyone that knows Gordon Titchens, he's really strict on diet and training, really, really, really hard. So, I'm very fortunate that I got to see that at a real young age. Um, I still there's a lot of habits that I had back then when I was 16, 17 year old to I do now. Um, so, I'm really grateful for seeing that. But just seeing the progression from 20 odd years ago to where it is now, just the, the science, sports science behind um, the way you train, how you load. Um, you know, supplements. Uh, I know supplements only sort of play one or two percent uh, in the overall scheme, but those one or two percent makes a massive difference when you're competing at a at a high level. Mm. Um, so yeah, I've, I've seen it. Um, seen all the the trends and fads that come up and down and come in and go out. And um, yeah, like I said before, I you know I found what works for me. Um, I'm really open minded to to listening and to learning and, and trying new things. Um, that's why I've really enjoyed. Um, learning about all these um, new sort of uh, ingredients and supplements that are out there to, to help the body and whatnot. And, and th- even this boxing journey has been an mm. awesome eye-opener because for rugby, um, you sort of got to stay at a, a level, same level all all year round pretty much. But for boxing, because you're, you know, you're training at an eight-week camp, you sort of start down here and you make your way up to, to fight night where you're hopefully at peak performance. So sort of... Ch- Understanding the the training load and workload that needs to go into um, into that preparation to make sure I'm on my best um, come eight weeks time um, has been a really um, eye opener and I've really enjoyed that that process of learning and, and understanding a bit more of how my body can work and how I can sort of change it because um, boxing is a lot more rotation um, a lot more power and a lot more explosive where I guess in rugby I sort of just you know chugged around and done my thing I need to do for eighty minutes. Mm. So you obviously said before you played rugby for almost 20 years um, at a very high level, but now competing as a professional boxer, you touched on it a little bit in a physical sense, 
but would you be able to talk about the the transition how that went for you and i guess the contrast between those two sports and even a mental capacity yeah i, I think for me I'm, I'm quite an open-minded person when it comes to like learning things and, and trying to understand things and it's a, a totally different new new sport and like you know i'm, I'm quite decent with my hands um mm. you know I sort of done a little boxing when i was younger but to come into a whole new sport and the a different sort of area sort of like professional um man i was just a sponge i was just asking all these questions um, i'm like even to the to this day um, i'm still trying to learn and, and grow um in, in the sport of boxing and um mentally it's you know it's a tough place to be if you don't put the work in um, mm. that's what i love about it because you have to put the work in or you're going to get caught out because it's not nice being in a ring um and you haven't done the work and you know it's a lonely place getting getting a beat down so um for me it's sort of like a chess match i sort of like to um you know read my opponent or read the situation or what's happening and and doing it um calmly under high pressure um mm. because physi- you're physically put under pressure and you got someone that wants to punch your head on which also puts you under pressure and also got mental and um you're fatigued as well so um yeah it just sort of ticks all the boxes for me and um just keep learning and keep growing and um, you know, watch a lot of boxing and a lot of other fights just to sort of, you know, understand more about it. And um, yeah, it's just been an enjoyable process. Mm. I feel like a lot for a lot of Kiwi kids growing up, we play a lot of team sports, like you said. And like, like for me, I played heaps of team sports growing up. And then as I was finishing up high school, I got into bodybuilding and did that for a few years and then got into uh, some martial arts, in particular kickboxing. And I seem to just fall in love with the discipline aspect of those mm. sports compared to the team sports and you, you were talking about it a little bit then um but did you sit what what drew you to boxing in particular and did you kind of fall in love with it a little bit at, in the sense that it was just a bit of a nice change from the footy well i sort of done a bit of boxing when i was a kid i remember i was uh intermediate what how old was i 12 years old i went to my friend's house one day and uh, i still remember this um his old man put some gloves on us and we had a bit of a spar in the kitchen i took a massive whack to the nose and um, my nose started you know my eyes started watering I wasn't crying it was just because you know you take mm. the whack to the nose get the, <laughs> yeah, get the water in your eyes yeah. that's what I keep telling everyone a bit of blood came down and I just loved it I mm. just loved that thing and the next day they took me to training and never really had the opportunity to, to fight because of rugby I, I mm. you know once I put my heart and soul into rugby it was just I was just so focused on rugby and I still done boxing as off season for training it was a great conditioning tool for me to, to stay off my joints and, and, and do that. And then um, it would have been the first fight for life. My first fight for life was at 2011, I think. Mm. I had the opportunity to fight on it. I was like, yo, I'm in. Um, jumped in and it was, I was terrible. I was just a, a great, like, I was just a, a corporate guy that just wanted a scrap. And it wasn't really boxing. It was just a, a brawl with uh, Wendell Saylor. But um, mm. from there, just the bug grew. Um, grew even more. I already had a passion for fighting. I love watching fight, uh, boxing. Um, yeah, it just grew from there, bro. And I've just had, you know, lucky enough to keep having opportunities to, to keep fighting on, on shows. And then obviously with my professional rugby career sort of coming to an end, uh, it was a great way for me to, I was, you know, still fit and healthy and I wanted to stay active. Um, probably not trying to get punched in the head is, is a good thing to, to do when you finish rugby, but mm. um, it was a passion of mine and had another opportunity just to, to get in there and, and keep going because, um, you know, I was fit and able. So, why not? Mm. I feel like a lot of professional athletes, when they finish up or retire from their sport, there, there can be a, almost a point of depression or, or questioning their uh, identity. But for you, it seems like there was almost a little bit of an overlap with the boxing and it might have been a saving grace in a way. But as your footy careers started to pretty much wrap up, have, is that something you've struggled with? <clears throat> or Yeah, oh, 100%, bro. And, and I see it with my friends that have retired or are retiring. Um, you can see it with past players. Um, and that's something I'm very aware of also is that I know that this boxing ain't going to be for, for much longer, maybe one or one more or two more years, or this could be it. Um, and then I know that I'm probably are going to go into, I know, some sort of state where it's, you know, shit, what do I do now? And and, that, and that's very scary. And mm. that's been, you know, I've been, I've been aware of that for the last year and I've got great support work around me uh, my partner's awesome um you know in, the, in that area um you know just keeping me you know for for what's next in life um so you get told this when you're a young footy player your whole career about 
what life's like after rugby, what's going to happen, rather than this. Mm. You sort of like sit there, like, you don't really pay attention, like, oh, yeah, it's not going to happen to me, but shit, it, like, it happens, and like, yeah, the, the boxing's probably been a blessing in disguise to sort of overlapping that. Um, mm. But also, I know when boxing's finished, then, you know, <laughs> what am I going to get to now? I'll, I tried, I didn't try bodybuilding, but I tried um, eating like a bodybuilder for, mm. um, it was supposed to be six weeks, but I lasted a week. And mm. I just, I like, I love rice, bro, but I was just like, I'm never ever having rice ever again in my life. I was just like, couldn't do the rice and the boiled chicken. Mm. I was just like, so, yeah, um, it's a definitely something that I'll, I will look, uh, well, you know, I'm very aware of and hopefully have put in a good system so I can just slip, slip into something, something mm. else. I feel like uh, I kind of went through this on a much quicker and smaller scale, but I would just probably say that the the skills and work ethic and discipline you've you've picked up from years of footy and and boxing in particular, you'll be able to take and apply in probably whatever avenue you want um, and do pretty well for yourself. But do you feel like you have uh, entrepreneurial tendencies, even with the CBD and the likes of that? Oh, I'm always keen to hear out a good idea. Mm. I made some bad decisions in, in my time business wise also you know I've lost a, a bit of money doing that but um, you know yeah I, I've just I guess I've, I've worked hard enough in my life to sort of give me those opportunities to, to, to deal and work with people that you know may help me push me in that, in that direction um, mm. but like you said rugby um, has given me some great values and, and some great lessons and it's given me some great uh, attributes where it can hopefully push into something else but you know, rugby is still definitely my number one passion. So um, it'll be s- silly for me to sort of just leave that that or, that area with uh, with the knowledge that I've built up over the years, and you know, hopefully I can pass it on to the to the younger generation and, and still sort of be in the game in some sort of format. Not sure what that is just yet. Um, mm. So yeah, we'll see what happens in, in a year or so. Do you enjoy working in a coaching capacity? Um, I, well, I've never really coached. I've sort of always like not coach but like had my opinion and, and team trainings mm. and whatnot and, and tried tried helping as much as I can. So um yeah, I do love the game. I do love the um you know, the the technical side of the game and the the tactical side as well. Um and also a little bit of the school stuff but I do I do like the technical and tactical side of rugby. Um and sort of picking the brains in there and whatnot. So yeah, we'll, we'll see. I, I guess I'm, I'm fortunate to sort of have a dabble if I want to have a dabble, and you know it'll be again silly of me not to, to try try different things in the in the rugby circle and and see what uh, sort of fits uh, fits the the uh, organisation where I am uh, best. Mm. So you are a family man, and and you have been for a good part of your career now. What is it like managing the training and the composition alongside being a dad? And is it something you've had to get better at? Uh, over the years, uh, yeah, well, yeah, one hundred percent. It's it's been a it's been a, a battle, uh, something that I've, I've battled with for, for a while now, and um, I'm just grateful for my partner that I have now, and and I'm I'm a way better dad than I was uh, a year ago um, because of her, and um, it is it is a struggle uh, with the kids as they get older. Um, at the moment, I feel like I'm just a, a bloody Uber driver, just mm. driving to sports here and there. I think my my older son, I think he does everything on every single day bar like a Thursday or something so you know he's 13 so he's into everything and then my youngest son just wants to be like his older brother so he wants to play all these different sports and you know I'm sort of trying to direct him into the game of golf so mm. he can retire for all of us um, so yeah it's, it's been an interesting journey being a father it's something I, I you know I absolutely love doing and um, you know I'm just so grateful for those two boys in my life mm. did you always want to be a dad yeah I did actually I always wanted to be a dad um, and yeah, I love every minute of it, even though mm. <laughs> they do my head in uh, every now and then. Um, mm. And we have our, um, our battles. It's, uh, there's no, no greater feeling uh, than, than being a, a father. Mm. This is reverting back a bit, but I just want to know how you found, I guess, the culture coming up in footy. Um, obviously, I'm sure some people are super disciplined, and then there's maybe a bit of a like drinking culture. Is that something you ever, I guess, struggled with or? sort of had to deal with in any capacity um nah again like i i said like when i came from the school of titch like there was like the strictest eating you could ever think of like we weren't allowed red meat we weren't allowed any lollies mm. ice creams or any treats and that sort of stuck with me for my whole career 
Um, drinking was a, like a big no-no in, in the sevens as well, and like I've never been a big drinker. Um, and like you said, there are guys that are super, super strict. Um, I was probably at the extreme end of being super, super strict. Um, and then there's other guys that, um, you know, can do what they can do. You always have that one friend that can eat what they want and, and be shredded or, you know, drink a, a pub full every weekend and, and still perform every Saturday. So, um, but for me, that, that was that was me. Um, you know, I was yeah, a little bit at the higher end of being a bit strict and, and whatnot. And um, sort of to this day, I'm still sort of, sort of like that, having those those habits that I've um, picked up as a young fella with the sevens, mm. which is so, annoying because I love to I love to have donuts now and then, eh? but then it just gets on my yeah. mind. I'm just like, damn, I have to go for a run now. You know, I wish <laughs> I could just have a donut, and enjoy it, and just don't worry about it. Mm. How's the nutrition been in terms of the boxing? Have you do you have to cut much weight when you fight or? No, nah, I'm, I'm 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 lucky. I'm a heavyweight, bro. Mm. So heavyweight's uh, any any weight, yeah, open weight. What do you want to be? Um, I am. With nutrition, though, I do eat for fuel. So um, I know if I eat junk, then I'm going to feel like junk. So I mm. do, I do eat pretty strictly. Um, I probably eat a lot more than I do now boxing than I did playing rugby, just because of the, the amount of energy that I mm. I seem to use up uh, for boxing. But again, like we talked about, that eight week camp, you're only doing it for eight weeks, and then you know get into I guess hopefully an optimal primal weight, and then the next. Uh, eight weeks when you're off it sort of goes back up and it's sort mm. of a, a yo-yo but um, yeah, I, yeah I'm pretty strict with my nutrition and I do love my food um, mm. you yeah, know it's just like a something in my head that just like if I do have a donut or something I'm just like damn it so I wish I could switch that off yeah um, so you do have the fight for life coming up on the 27th of this month um, and you're scheduled to box league legend Justin Hodges uh, can you tell me a little bit about that event as a whole and then how your preparations have been yeah, it's a, it's a great event. It's a, it's an event that uh, they get a, some old has-beens to, to jump on the card, rugby versus league, and, and put the mouth guard in and go at it. But it's a great opportunity, especially for me, to um, to showcase the New Zealand boxing talent that we have because there's three great fights that, mm. uh, that are proper professional fights that, uh, I guess, a, a show like the Fight for Life puts a lot of eyes on so that mm. you know these, these young boxers are going to get the opportunity to, to fight on a big stage. And these are world-class fighters, two or three of them, so... Um, that's one reason why I enjoy jumping on on this show, um, and yeah, I just I just love seeing the boys get out of their comfort zone and um, and just swing at it because no matter what, we're still going to have that competitive edge and we still want to mm. we still want to win. Um, and yeah, we know it's all like you know charity and whatnot, but it's a corporate fight. Doesn't matter. There's there's still that competitive edge. We've always had it. That's why these guys have been the best um, in rugby league and in rugby um, for a very long time and have been the elite because they've all got all that competitive edge. So. Um, I know there'll be a bit of smiles and laughter before, but uh, come Thursday uh, in a week's time, it's uh, it's going to be all on. Mm. Um, so just before we wrap up, I've got some uh, quick fire questions. We're just going to roll through. Yep. Um, and the first one is, what would be your last meal if you were on death row? Oh. In a main and a dessert. A main and a dessert. I don't know if I'll go for main. I think I'll just go for a straight twelve pack of Mama's donuts. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then a probably McFlurry to wash it down yeah. with. <laughs> nice. Um, one song to train to for the rest of your life, or I guess even a walkout song. Ooh, this is a hard one because when I first started boxing, it used to be like, you know, trying to get in the zone and whatnot. But then as mm. you get do more, the more you get the crowd involved, the better. Mm. So it'll be sort of a, a sing-along song. I'm not sure which one. Maybe, I don't know. Um, Sweet Caroline's always a good one. I think yeah. Tyson Fury walked up to that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in your opinion, the greatest athlete of all time across all sports? Oh, probably Bo Jackson. I don't know if many yeah. people know who Bo Jackson is, but Bo Jackson was pretty awesome. Nice. Uh, favorite movie of all time? Favorite movie of all time will be Friday. Yeah. Uh, your biggest inspiration? My biggest inspiration? Oh, would definitely be my family. Mm. What about in a sporting capacity? Sporting capacity, um, I looked up to Michael Jones when I was younger. Um, mm. Also, uh, Ray Lewis um, in America. Um, and of lately, just because he's old and he's the man, um, LeBron James. Mm. Me. Uh, and one piece of advice you would give your 10 year old self? One piece of advice. <laughs> um, ooh. 
Don't pick on your brother. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, before I wrap up, bro, is there anyone or anything you would like to plug or thank? Um, oh, I just thank all the, my family, friends, and, and supporters, and um, yeah, and yourself for having me on the show, bro. It's, uh, it's always pretty keen to jump on podcasts, and don't do many of them, so yeah, mean. Uh, for anyone listening, you can follow Liam and what he's up to on Instagram at Liam Messam, or lowercase, no spaces. But, bro, thank you so much for your time today. Um, I really appreciate having you on to have a chat and uh, all the best for everything you've got going on the rest of the year and the fight for life in particular. Awesome. Thanks, brother. My pleasure. Cool.